All right, gang, here we go. This is for physics unit 10, part three. We're talking about magnetic force. All right, so, so far we've talked about magnetism. We've talked about magnetic fields. We've talked about how to uh, figure out the relationship between current and magnetism and how and we've explored how magnetism or how current can cause a magnetic force now we're going to look at well what can a magnetic field do to a moving charged particle okay and what it amounts to here is that the magnetic field that you have okay can exert what's called a magnetic force and essentially that magnetic force is what you feel when you feel magnets pulling on one another Okay, and uh, this magnetic force can be uh, can act on moving charged particles. Specifically, they have to be moving. All right. Uh, now, the force is greatest when the movement is perpendicular to the magnetic field, and the force is zero when the particles move along the field line. So, if you have a magnetic field uh, that's facing this direction, so we'll say this is your magnetic field B. All right. If your uh, four or your particle right is moving this way, so let's say you have a particle right here, and it's moving this way, right? Its velocity, these two would be perpendicular to one another, so it would have a uh, a maximum of the magnetic field, right? And then not only that, but like, so if you think about it, like what else would be perpendicular to this field? Well, if you had a charge that was coming into the page, remember that X means that it's going into the page at you, that means that, that would also be perpendicular. Or if you are you had a charge that was coming out of the page, right? That would be coming uh, out at you, right? That would also be perpendicular to the field. So, you know, anywhere that's completely parallel or level with uh, this completely perpendicular line here would be at a maximum, okay? And then at zero when the particles are moving in the same. So again, if we have a magnetic field that's going up like this, this is our B, if your velocity is parallel with it, so let's say you have a, you know, a test charge going this way, this is your velocity that's going this direction, okay? Then uh, you would have a, a magnet or a force of zero. All right, um, and so perpendicular is maximum, and then force uh, parallel is zero, and then so if you're slightly offset, so say this, you know, you've got, uh, f you know, it's going in like kind of like an angle like this. Your test charges, if it's going down to the right, that would be somewhere less than your maximum, but more than uh, the zero. Okay, um, so we can use this formula here to calculate if our uh, <laughs> the magnetic force is, or in, if our velocity is completely perpendicular. So this is how we calculate the maximum magnetic force. The for magnetic force is equal to Q, which is the charge, times the velocity of our moving particle times the magnetic field. All right, magnetic field strength. All right, here's another way of saying the same thing. So we can just divide it over to find the magnetic field value B equals F magnetic over Q times V. All right, so force, a magnetic force over the uh, magnitude of the charge times the speed of the charge. All right, the SI unit for magnetic field is the Tesla, capital T. All right. uh, so now we also, we lead us to our second right-hand rule. All right, also I like to call it the slap rule because it looks like you're gonna slap somebody. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, this is your right-hand rule to calculate the force. All right, so you take your, your hand, okay, and instead of, remember our old right-hand rule, we made thumbs up, right? Our thumb was the current. Now this is slightly different. Our thumb here is the velocity, the movement, uh, the, vo the, the v way the positive charge is moving. All right, and our fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field. All right, and then as long as our thumb is in the direction of moving positive charge and our fingers are in the movement of the direct field, the palm of our hand points in the direction of the force. Okay, so the force is always this direction. Now the one trick here is that if you have a negative particle, then the force would actually be out of your hand or out of the back of your hand. So, uh, so you would still put your thumb in the direction of the negative, okay? But your uh, your force would be opposite because it's a negative charge instead of a positive charge. So here we go, practice problem. It says an electron moving north at 4.5 times 10 to the fourth meters per second enters a one millitesla magnetic field pointed upward. We want to find the magnitude and the direction of the force on the electron. All right, so, so let's draw what's going on here. So you got an electron moving north. Okay, so let's say let's say north is going into the screen. All right, so that means we've got an electron that's going into the screen. So we're going to make it an x. Okay, so it's a 4.5 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. 
All right. So one of the hard things about all this is you have to start thinking in three dimensions, okay? Because it's going that way, and then we've got a, a magnetic field that's going this way, right? Our magnetic field is going upward, right? So the particle is moving that way into the screen and then it's going upwards. So now we have to figure out uh, the direction. Okay, so remember we stick our thumb in the direction of the movement, so it's going to be going into the screen, right? And then the fingers go in the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so it's going to be like this. Okay, so <laughs> that makes sense, right? And so based on my hand, right, uh, we would originally, if it was a positive charge, the force would be coming out of my palm, right? But because it's an electron, it's a negative force that's going to be coming out of the back of my hand. So it's going to be coming out this way, all right? So that means the force is going to be uh, to the west. It's going to be over here. So this will be our force going that way, all right? So now we need to calculate the magnitude. Well, that's easy. The force, the magnetic force here is equal to QVB, QVB. Uh, Our Q is the charge on an electron, which is uh, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th. All right, our velocity is uh, 4.5 times 10 to the fourth, and then the, the magnetic field is one times 10 to the minus third because it's in milliteslas, but it's supposed to be in teslas. All right, so our magnetic force is equal to 1.602 e to the negative 19th times 4.5 e to the fourth times one e to the negative third. All right, and I got the wrong answer. Oh, I put in the wrong value. There we go. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 18th. 7.2 times 10 to the minus 18th. And since it's force, it's Newtons. And since it's going to the left, we define that as west. All right. <clears throat> so that's the answer to the first one. It says, what would the force be if the particle was a proton? Well, it would be the exact same magnitude because it's got the exact same magnitude of charge. It's got the same velocity. It's got in the same magnetic field. The only difference is that instead, then when we do this, instead of it coming out of the oops, coming out of the back of my hand, it's going to be coming out of the palm. So it's going to be going that direction, right? Towards out of my palm that way. All right. So it would be the same value, but to the east. And then it finally it says, what would the force be if the particle was a neutron? Well, neutrons have a neutral charge, so that means our Q would be zero, and anything times zero is zero, so the force would be zero. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this next one says, a proton moving east experiences a force of 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 19th north uh, newtons upward due to the Earth's magnetic field. This location, the field has a magnitude of 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5th teslas to the north. Find the speed of the particle. All right, so um, so yeah, so you got uh, F magnetic is equal to QVB, right? We want to solve for our velocity. So that means our velocity is equal to uh, the magnetic force over Q times B, all right? And then let's see, so we got the, the force here is 8.8 .8 times 10 to the minus 19th. And it says it's a proton, so it's the same charge, 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19th times our magnetic field strength, 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5th. All right, and that's it. 8.8 e to the minus 19th divided by 1.602 e to the negative 19th times 5.5 e to the minus 5th. All right, and we get 99875, so 99,875, but we only want two sig figs, so it becomes 1.0 times 10 to the 4, 5th, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1.0 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. Cool. All right, now look at this. This is pretty wild, okay? So if so far, we've just kind of looked at the idea of the particle going through just a small portion of our magnetic field. Uh, what if our electron or our proton or whatever our charged particle is goes into a uniform magnetic field that is rather large, okay? Um, and so let's, let's use our right-hand rule to figure out what our force would be acting on this charge here, this Q, all right? So... 
Remember, our uh, thumb goes in the direction of the velocity, so it's going upwards. And then it said those are x's for our magnetic field, so the magnetic field is going to end of the screen. And so our thumb is pointed like this, right? And our magnetic fields are going into the screen, so that means the, uh, the force is going to be going towards the center, right? So the force will be going this way, our F magnetic. All right. <clears throat> now we can do it for the rest, or for here. It says, which direction would the force be when the charge is at the top? So let's see. So if we're at the top here, well, our for, our velocity as we go around here, you know, um, our velocity is now it's still going to be tangent to the circle. So our velocity is still going to be pointed this way. And so we can do the same idea. We point our thumb in the direction of the velocity. So there's your thumb in the direction of the velocity. The magnetic field is still going into the screen, so it goes that way. And so the force is going to be coming out the bottom of our hand, right? And so it's going to be going this way. Um, and so our force is going to be going straight down like that. And then we can do it the same thing over here. Hopefully you're getting the picture here. Our velocity is still going to be tangent to the circle. It's going to be coming down here. And then at the end of the screen, notice that my hand gets turned here. So it comes out the palm of my hand right there. Okay. And so your force is still going that way. And then et cetera, et cetera, right? And so as we go around the circle, we see that our force is always pointed towards the center. And if you remember our unit on circular motion, we know that this is called a centripetal force. So because of this, we can actually make our charge stay in a circular pattern. Okay. So if you've ever wondered yourself, well, how do those really smart scientists make uh, the you know Large Hadron Collider and like super colliders work and make those particles go faster and faster but stay in a circle and make them keep turning over and over? They're too small to like tie to a string and twirl them like this. They use it using magnetic fields. You turn on the magnetic field, uh, and the, as those charged particles start going, they get turned by those magnetic fields. And you can uh, you know they're large electromagnets, so you can change the current traveling through them in order to change the strength of the magnetic field, make them turn more or less so on and so forth all right um, and so we can use our you know our magnetic field to make this charged particle move in a circle now uh, <clears throat> next thing here is this a current carrying wire also because you have moving charges within your current your wire you can also have uh, a force acting on these charges that are moving right because inside this current you've got these charges that are moving this direction it says our current is going this way so our velocity is that way we're going into the page right we've got our right hand rule slap rule and so our force is going to be coming out you know going that way with the force right here we see the force drawn right here Okay, um, and so we can use this to figure out well, what would the force be acting on our wire? Okay, um, <clears throat> and so the formula to figure out the magnetic force on a current carrying wire is this guy here. The magnetic force is equal to B, which is your magnetic field, the intensity, and then your current is your I, and then this curvy L is the length of the conductor that's inside of it. So not the overall length of the conductor, but just the length of the conductor inside of that magnetic field. Okay. So pretty wild here is this new idea that like uh, two current carrying wires can create a magnetic field, right? Or one magnetic or one current carrying wire creates a magnetic field, and that magnetic field can act on another current carrying wire. So let's look at this guy real quick. Okay, so um, if you have you know a current traveling through this, we can use our original right hand rule. Our current's going up, and so our magnetic field curves in the direction of our fingers, so it's going to be curving like this. Right, so our current, our magnetic field turns like this, right? It goes from the left around the back like this. Um, this. The other way we draw this, remember, is using our x's. So it's coming out of the page on this, so we'd use a dot right here. And then it's going into the page over here, so we'd use an x on this side. And so remember that it doesn't just create this one ring, it creates infinitely many rings that kind of go around and around. So these x's would kind of keep going like this, they'd come out like this. And eventually they'd get, you know, there would be one of these magnetic fields would be acting on the current going through this. So the magnetic field that the current or the, the wire, these uh, charges inside this current carrying wire experience are going to be going into the page. So because the velocity of the electrons are going up and our magnetic field is going into the page, it's going to be an experience of force that's pulling it to the left. All right, and then vice versa, you can also have, you know, this guy here, we'll ch maybe we'll change colors real quick. <clears throat> oh, let's do, let's do the screen. Is that easy to see? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, it's not too bad. So if you do, uh, so, so the current, th this guy, it's harder for me to see it, that's for sure. <clears throat> Maybe I'll change it to something else. 
can't quite see my pen. Let's do this guy here. All right, so you've got, um, so th this guy here, you've got this, uh, this current carrying wire. We can use our, you know, our first right hand rule. The current's going up, so it's going to curve this way, right? And so uh, we get this guy here. So on this side of the wire, this is going to be coming out of the page. So it's going to be dots, and going into the page is going to be X's. And so as we go to the left here, same idea, right? We're going to keep going here. Eventually, we'll have uh, this current that's acting on this guy right here, or this magnetic field that's acting on this current carrying wire is going to be coming out of the page. Right, and so uh, our magnetic field, right? We're gonna, this one's the hard one, right? Your velocity is going up like this, but the current, the magnetic field's coming out of the page at you, so the magnetic force is going to go to the right. Okay, so it experienced this current here. So if you run, essentially, what the what does this mean? Uh, wh what this means is that if you take two two wires that both have currents running through them, if the currents are running parallel to one another, they'll actually experience a force that's dragging them towards each other. Okay, um, and then vice versa, you can walk through the same idea here. And uh, if your currents are opposite one another, one's going up and one's going down, they produce forces that are uh, repelling one another. Okay, and you can pause the video and walk yourself through that, see if you can come up with that idea. Okay, <clears throat> let's do a practice problem here. It says a 4.5 meter wire carries a current of 12.5 amps from north to south if the magnetic force on the wire due to the uniform magnetic field is 1.1 times 10 to the third north uh, downward. What is the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field? All right, so uh, it says that you've got a 4.5 meter uh, meter wire from north to south. So remember we decided that into the screen was north so coming out of the screen would be uh, north to south, right? Because it's coming out at us. So the, so we'll just put a little dot here. Gosh dang it. So there's that. I don't want a menu. I don't want a menu. Alright, so there's a, there it is coming out at us, right? And so the um and then it says if the magnetic force in the wire the magnetic is at one point one times ten, so the force is going downwards, right? So this is our force, <clears throat> right? So we can try to figure out what's going on here. So it's coming out of the page, right? And the force is downward, so the velocity here has to be. It's going north to south, so the velocity has to be. Um, has to be to the west, right? And so uh, so you get him to the west. Now we can calculate the thing here. So the magnetic force, this is our formula for magnetic force, F magnetic equals BIL, okay? But we wanna find, sorry, we wanna find the magnitude and direction of the magnetic field. So this over here, BI times L. Well, we're trying to solve for B. So B is equal to F over I times L. So our F value here is 1.1 times 10 to the third, all right? And then that's over our current, which is 12.5, times our length, which is 4.5, all right? And we should get 20-ish. So 1.1 e to the third, oops, positive third, divided by uh, 12.5 times 4.5. You get 19.566655556, whatever. And then so that with two sig figs, that would round to 20 Teslas. All right, and it's going to be to the west. All right, so some practical applications of all of this stuff here. Uh, cathode ray tubes, so this is how original, like old school CRTs, that's what CR, if you've ever heard that term before, CRTs, that's what it stands for, is cathode ray tubes. And so you've got, uh, you know, you got a cathode in here and some sort of heater that, that heats these guys up and it shoots out these light rays, these electrons. And then you can use uh, essentially what amounts to electromagnets to change the direction of them. So here they're using a focusing coil uh, to get them to point in the same direction. Then you use a deflection coil to change the angle at which they go and then they'll hit the screen and make the screen light up all, all this stuff here. All right, and so you've got your cathode is down here and your anode is up here. So you get this, uh, you know, overall flow of electrons from one side to the next, which is what makes the electrons travel, right, as you go from cathode to anode. So anyway, um, and so this is how these would work. You know, J.J. Uh, Thompson used these to demonstrate the movement of the electrons or the, the charge of the electron and the electron is negatively charged, so on and so forth. Uh, but we use these to great effect uh, for entertainment.
<laughs> for televisions and stuff like that. So this is pretty fascinating. Uh, these magnets in the back is really why uh, televisions and uh, all this stuff was so dang uh, heavy back in the days because uh, these you know these back ends of them had these big old pieces of metal worth of, you know all these wrapped copper and so on and so forth so they could create electric fields. Uh, speakers are another example of this. Okay, uh, they use you know here's your magnet. You got a north pole and then actually two south poles and then you get a voice coil here and by changing the the moving these guys here you can actually cause these electrons that are in this coil to move back and forth which would cause the coil to vibrate actually vibrate in there and as it vibrates it causes you know usually a lot of times you have like a little paper disc in there or something like that that vibrates back and forth causes those mechanical waves that would you know pulse and come out the other side all right and so those are just two small applications of everything we've kind of talked about um and so that's it for chapter 19 you made it through just a couple of one more chapter left and you're done with physics i'm so proud of you uh, just hang in there just a little bit longer just keep on trying keep on keeping on do your practice problems let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you on the flip side